Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on correspondence analysis. What's correspondence analysis? Well, if we have two variables, nominal or ordinal, the usual way to present the relation, the interaction of both variables would be with a cross table. So if we go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and cross tabs, and here as already predefined, select BMI classified and city, click OK, we would get this cross table. However, the disadvantage of this cross table is it's full of numbers. Well, obviously for a statistician, mathematician, this wouldn't be a problem, but if you want to um, present something like this to a broader audience, perhaps an audience with no mathematical background, would be nicer if we have some kind of graphical display of this table. So something comparable as if we would have metric data to illustrate the relation, we could generate a scatter plot. Here a scatter plot wouldn't actually work so well because the scatter plot would contain exactly nine different points. And well, the only possibility would be via the size of the points which would then reflect here the different versions. But in the end still wouldn't give us so much of an insight which of the different cities are more similar, more different, which of the different BMI categories are similar or more different. So in this case we find a solution with the so-called correspondence analysis. What is correspondence analysis? Correspondence analysis considers all of the three different rows, uh, columns and rows and considers each of them as a vector. So here for example we would get one vector with three entries for Cologne, one vector for Düsseldorf, three-dimensional, one for Wuppertal, three-dimensional. The same thing, we would get one vector for below average, three entries, so three-dimensional, one for average, one for above average. Then, if we have three vectors, we can calculate the distance between the different vectors. And having the distances, we can graphically display them. However, this would be a three-dimensional plot. Again, three-dimensional plots, not so easy to be displayed or analyzed. And well, this would still be possible, but now imagine we have a cross table with five different cities five different um, dimensions would be pretty hard to actually be displayed. So what we do instead, we consider the, uh, the two-dimensional shadow of the result. So we break it down to a two-dimensional representation which keeps to the distances we just calculated as good as possible. And well, the method that does this is the so-called correspondence analysis. And well, as we start here in all cases with three dimensional vectors, we want to reduce this to two dimensions. What we are actually going to do is a dimension reduction. So we find the corresponding method under dimension reduction. And we see here the second point that's correspondence analysis. So we click here. Then we can select the two variables, the classified BMI and the city variable. Here we see this is still shaded out, so we need to define which classes in each variable to be considered. So the BMI starts with 0, goes to 2, click update. So we have three categories here. And the cities, they go from 1, 1 to 3, click on update. So here again we have three different categories. Click on continue. Then we could also already click on OK. However, I want to mention one thing before we continue. This is if you go to plots, you could select up here with scatter plots, not only the plot where you get both variables in the same graph, in the same diagram, but you could also differentiate and display only the rows or only the columns. So this is nice if you want to focus on just one of the two variables. We leave it as it is 
And well, the last comment to mention, if you go to model and you want to select not the chi squared but the typical Euclidean distance, so interpret the two uh, the different columns and rows as real vectors and not as vectors resulting from nominal or ordinal data, you could uh, select here Euclidean distance instead of the chi squared. Having mentioned those comments, we'll leave it as it is and just click OK. Then he starts working. He starts with reporting a correspondence table. In the next part, he reports here our chi squared statistic. So whether the two variables have something to do. If we would have selected chi squared with the cor um, correspondence table, with the contingency table up here, we would have gotten the same chi squared, the same significance level. We get our points for the rows and for the columns, so more or less the coordinates for the two dimensions, and here a plot for them. Now we see Wuppertal is relatively close to people of average weight, Düsseldorf is relatively close to people below average, Cologne is somewhere, well, almost in the middle of all three parts, but above average people, they are relatively different from all the other, as well from the people from the different cities, as from the other two with average and below average. So this shows us that the, they, the average below average, are much closer together to each other than to above average. This also shows us that above average is not aligned with one of those cities. So it's not particular that all the above average guys come from Wuppertal, from Düsseldorf or Cologne. It's slightly nearer to Cologne, so it's a bit more of the people come from Cologne. But that's the only thing we can get from this table. However, this table makes the analysis, makes an in-depth analysis, way easier than taking a look only here at the correspondence table. Well, and this then was everything I wanted to mention in regards to the correspondence analysis. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from this section. And if you want to see more of this type of videos, feel free to visit the rest of this SPSS methodology. Until then, see you and goodbye.